Okay. Here we go. Okay, this shear is the Ilo Nishmas Kal and Selma Bas Irving, the four of, um, what's his name again? Uh, Uriel David Ben Yochaved. Uriel David Ben Yochaved. Shakol Choleis from Israel. That's a shame. Okay. So basically, in a nutshell, we have already explained that. Every one from Israel has a Bechina of Malchus. Uh, each one according to his own Nunvav, Nunvav. We're finishing Gimel. Rechab Avram. According to his Bechina, every person needs to use the authority, the malchus that he has over the neshamas that are under him to guide them, to reprove them uh, so they can go with their chayosha. Now that particular station where there are other people under you is called Rabbonus you know, uh, and it's a very dangerous position to be in because, is that me? Yeah, no, okay. That the, uh, the Malchus has this um, this, this, this nature that it shortens the life of those who hold it. And we have actually uh, touched upon this Nakudis repeating again and again and again that in order to to uh, alleviate that danger of the, the, the life shortening uh, aspect of Malchus, a person need to interject uh, what we call arichus yomim, or in other words, a uh, longevity into the malchus, and this is done through the learning of the Torah. Esik Torah establishes a das, and the das itself already injects, you know, arichus yomim to the malchus, and then that Torah, that das enters the 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 astora. That the people that are under a person, the neshamas that are under you, are are are, are under. And the letters of the Torah, that you know that particular reality constitutes. I will explain. I'm just sort of like trying to run an abridged version of the uh, uh, the Torah itself. Uh, hollers to every person you know, within his astara, um, and tells him, fools, until when will you be enraptured and in love with the foolishness? So, one of the questions that, that, that are raised in this, in this particular union, what does it mean, a rikhus yamim? You say, you have to put life into the malchus, so there won't be the opposite of life, which is death. 
the language of Arichas Yomim, the Rebbe says both the, the lotion of Lamshich Chaim, to bring, to draw life from Chaya Chaim. This is done through the Lim of the Torah, where you're actually, you know, uh, saying the words of the Torah, enunciate the words of the Torah with your mouth. What is specifically the Arichas Yomim? Ever says, first of all, you have to put a Rikha into the Malchus. And the way to do it is with Das. We get the Das is through a Rikha itself. So it seems like almost like a circular kind of an argument. You know, this is a Rikha and you, you do it through Das, and you get to the Das, Rikha Okay, what is a Rikha What are we talking about? So, because a chaim, a sedam. Yeah. So, but he says it's, it's it's a very particular way of saying a rishas yomim. The Rebbe says that the reason why this is done with the Torah, because the Torah is built of letters and words and psukim and parshas and so forth and so on. The same way, the life of a person is also framed. And determined by by days and by weeks and by months and by years. So the rabbi is talking about that you, you need to have the capacity to create the capacity to create a symptom, a constriction that will enable one to to stem the tsunami of the Chayachai. In order to perhaps shed some light into this particular matzis uh, of Arichus Yomim, we need to take a look at what situation this Arichus Yomim, this Malchus, uh, comes to alleviate. What are the people who are in the Astora? What are they suffering from? The Rebbe says some jumped from their place. Maybe they were jarred. You go over there to paint the first one. Yes. It says, Mordechai mm -hmm. is strolling before the huts of Beis HaNoshim, the, 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 the yard of the house of the Noshim. And that's the Shlom Esther. To know the Shlom Esther, to ascertain the Shlom of Esther. When it says, Mordechai, this is the tzaddik, that he comes to interject the, the, the highest of, you know, of, into the reality of Beis HaNoshim. These are the people who have left the Kodesh Baruch Hu, who lag behind, who are getting the title of Noshim, of female. And they said that Noshim has three meanings. There are the three reasons why people get far away from Kodesh Baruch. One of them is they get jarred, Gida Nosha, you know, that springs from its place. Um, people can go through different kind of maybe traumas or whatever it is, or life situations, whatever it is that cause them, you know, to, you know, to start life or look at life with the left foot. And therefore, they are far from Kaddish Baruch they don't see Kaddish Baruch and so forth and so on. Uh, the second reason is that, I mean, it says that a fashion of Nashim is Lishon forgetfulness in the Shia. This Yosef called Menashe, Kinashani, Elohim, Eskol, Amoli, Besovev, Eskol, Amoli, that I forgot. Kaddish Baruch made me forget you know, the house of my father, and you know, and the third, the third reason why people fall into, into Astora is they, they are aware of what it is, that, where they were, where they used to be, but they just don't have the wherewithal. They, they, they became weakened, like, you know, it's like, a, you know, it used to be many years ago, the 50s and 60s. Oh, you probably, some people probably know that. There was 
this boxer he used to be a champion of some kind of a you know, you know, I don't know, featherweight, whatever it is, a boxing champion. I don't know, I don't remember what his name is. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not talking about his boxing career. After he, uh, after he finished his boxing career, he has actually started a new career. His career was that he would dare the world's strongest people to lift him up from the ground. You remember that? And what what he would do is he had a secret. Nobody knows what his secret. You know how it worked. He used to hold like the 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 I don't know the left or the right wrist of the person who was trying to pick him up and put his finger at the side of the neck of the person, and they could not lift him up. I mean, there are pictures of him with Muhammad Ali trying to pick, couldn't lift him up. Yeah, he couldn't lift him up. I, um, apparently what he was doing, what he was probably doing is that he was he was holding like pressing on the nerves that basically made it impossible for them to use their strength. They couldn't lift him up. It is, that's the kind of situation that I'm talking about, that a person, he realizes that there is no other tachlis except the Vedas Hashem. There's no other cause to be in this world except to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But somehow, <laughs> that's a horror hold on his wrist and has a finger to his neck, and he just cannot lift himself up. It's like people who are uh, depressed. Can tell them, okay, just you know, just get out of it. <laughs> you know, just uh, just wake up. Can't do that. I mean, you can do that, but it doesn't mean they're going to wake up, or they're going to get up and they're going to do something. So these are these are the 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 uh, the three kinds of 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 incapacitating situations that cause people. To fall into a store and a store of the store. When you actually come to think of what is the real reason, no matter what kind of cause of a store or the store is, what is the reason why are they not actually getting up and doing it? Once they find out that there's a Kaddish Baruch Hu, they get a notion of Kaddish Baruch Hu, but they're like, oh, I just can't help myself. Or the reason for it, strangely enough, is Rebu or. That's what it's saying here. Rebu or means that people fall off from Avodah Sashem. We're not talking about people, you know, that are Tinoch Shanishbo. The Rebbe said, the Rebbe says, I think in Torah, hey, at the very end, that he says that when a person has uh, uh, immoral thoughts entering his head, yeah. immoral thoughts yeah, entering his head, yeah. and he fights them off, he's able to bring back people that are totally out of Yiddishkeit. Take a look at uh, bring back, okay? Which is similar kind of mechanism. But when you come, you know, when I look at myself, and I'm saying that why am I not doing everything I I possibly can, you know, to 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 get ahead and, and do what it is I need to do in this world. The answer is always because my demands for myself, the way that I define Avoid Hashem is way beyond my capacity. Most of the people that don't learn in Kail, they start like two years in Kail or whatever it is, and they go to work. Why do you go to work? Why don't you, you know, why don't you sit in Kail and learn? Uh, come on, I mean, like, 
I'm not going to be a Rav Avadia Yosef, you know? I'm not going to be the Chazanish, I'm not going to be Rav Eliashiv. You know, I'm just a, you know, run-of-the-mill kind of, a, might as well go to work. That idea that you have to be the Lubavitcher Rebbe or the Baba Sali or whatever it is, otherwise it's not worth the effort, this is called Rebuy Or. Or, light. Too much light. Light. Too much light. Called Rebuy Or. What the tzaddik needs to do, the tzaddik needs to narrow down and reveal to a person the value of his avoida, where he is, where he really is. And then a person gets a tremendous amount of chayas. If you believe that what you do is really important and really great, that makes you feel terrific. Right? And it gets you moving. Good, the you can do more. The main reason why, for instance, people don't, you know, create businesses and persevere is because they don't believe it's going to work. People, you know, they start a business or whatever it is, or they want to start a business, they do, you know, whatever. The reason why they don't get ahead, the reason why they don't actually succeed is because they don't believe it's going to work. In fact, if they start something and it does start work and it starts succeeding, you know, with the food comes the appetite. Hey, you know, it could work. <laughs> Golly, <laughs> would have thunk it, right? And, and you, know, the, you know, the other people, he says, yeah, but what about all these ambitious people? The ambitious people believe. They believe that they can make it work. They will make it work. Either they believe in themselves or they believe in whatever it is that they're doing. But the belief is so strong. Now, I actually, I actually have... So somebody came to me, you know, to see what it is I could help them with marketing of a certain uh, organization that they want to, to build up, they want to create. It's a very harsh of a organization. Their idea is very important. And um, so, I, so they asked me, you know, what, what, what is it going to cost, whatever it is. So I told them, listen, before I even look into what it is that it needs to be done, I mean, I took a look at what they've done, what, you know, what they've been doing until now, and it's, it's not there. So I told them, listen, I gave him a certain estimate, not very, not a lot of money. You know, I'm a small time guy. Um, and they said, no, this is, this is too much. We don't have that kind of money because it's still not running. And the guy says, but we need to do something because we're running out of time and money. And I told them in the meantime, I'm willing, you know, to, to advise them, you know, for free, you know, whatever it is that can help them, because I think it's an important endeavor, what they're trying to do. So when they tell me that we're running away of time and money, I didn't actually want to tell it to them. But I didn't want to say it out loud. You guys are never going to make it. I mean, it's, it's an honest worry if I will say it to them. But that's the truth. You take a look at Ezra Sachim. You know Ezra Sachim here at the end of, of, of the land. How come this guy never ran, ran out of time and money? Because his endeavor, he believes in it so much, in, 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 in how vital this is, and that he is the one who's supposed to do it, you know, that, what do you mean there's no time and money? As much time as I need and as much money as I need. You know, there's only rough patches, you know, where I don't have, you know, I don't have the wherewithal, don't, don't have liquidity, whatever it is. There's no such thing, there's no time or money. Because the thing is like this, if you are obligated and you believe that the goal that you are fighting for is the, there's no, you receive, you refuse to receive no as an answer. 
even with the worst kind of marketing and advertising that you can think of, you'll succeed. At the end, you'll succeed. This Vesmetosh was built with such a mood. Not with wise marketing, not with clever advertising, but with simple, unwavering, refusal to take no as an answer, determination, zeal. It's not a question of if, it's not even a question of how. It's a question of when, and it happened. The people that are out of Avodis Hashem, I mean, everybody has his limits. I mean, it's not not everybody can, you know, uh, be the chazonish. Not everybody can be rabbeinu. It's, it's like a is because there is no there's no motivation. There's no belief. There's no sight. And Mimela, you have to be so big in order for this to actually be satisfying. I have to be a gurul batera. I have to be a tzaddik. I have to be this. I have to be that. If not, then okay, you know, just be run of the mill. That's fine. But just you know, just uh, just swim along together with everybody else. A richus yomim, yomim. Rabbeinu said is the mida. This says umida siyomai mahi. That's my zetayra. And the mida, the measurement, the quantity of my days is tayra. Like you need. The word of Torah, a pasuk of Torah, you know, a parsha of Torah, chumash of Torah, and so on and so on. Each one is a keli, each one is a vessel with its own boundaries. Some people, you can just give them a whole lecture with a lot of complicated ideas, and they can handle it. Some people, you have to go, you know, word for word, make sure that they understand. And once they get it, you can move on. Each one needs that great tsunami, this great cause, this great, you know, narrow down to his kalim, to his, once it fits your kalim, bam, you're off to the races. No problem. Arich Siomim is the life force from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, as it being uh, 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 is being constricted or, or geared down, you step down and to yeah. channel channel in in in, in constricted, you know, and to to your kalim, to the meters, to the yomim, your yomim. For some people, you have to give them more life. You have to give them more ore. You have to give them other people. Most people. You have to give less or the hardest thing in Avodah Hashem, in the motivation for Avodah Hashem, the biggest hurdle in 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 Avodah Hashem, in the motivation for Hashem, is satisfaction with what you have achieved. Eh. What do you say by Avodah Hashem? Eh. <laughs> That's the biggest obstacle. If you believe that that's the job of the tzaddik, this is what the das of the tzaddik does, bring it all the way down to where you are, where every single, every, every person who has a nithim is, is the notion of how great it is, what you are able to do. The value of every bracha you make. Of every, Rabbeinu says, in, in, in starts to, in, in Torah, Torah, I think, in Torah, Tess, in, in Torah, Tess, I think. He says, Da, ki iker achayas, the main chayas, you receive from, from tefillah. Shenema tefillah lekel chaya. The way, usually the way, of, you know, of understanding this passage is a, a prayer to the kel of my life. You are my life. I'm davening to you. Rabbeinu explains the passage in a different way and he says, Tfilah lekel, davening to Kaddish Baruch Hu is chayai. 
When you are davening, you know, when you put your koyach into the davening, it totally renews your koyach. It reveals to you that there is this mechanism, even if you just say, you know, a single bracha bechavana. Or if Nassim came to Rabbeinu at the outset of his mother, and he asked him, he asked him what he could do to the Torah of her in the Shoma, you know, Rabbeinu didn't tell him, you know, make Tanesim, make, uh, you know, you know, he says, he says, make an Elicha Sheyotza. Make a proper bracha, a Sheyotza. You give a tremendous Elicha for the Neshama of one's mouth. A Elicha Sheyotza. It's not because, like, who do you think you are? Don't forget. Adabe, your shayotza is so great, it can give a to the neshama of, of ancestors that pass away. That passed away. Pa- ancestors, parents, whatever it is, that passed away. When a person makes a brach, a shayotza, any brach, a is, is 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 the greatest of them. Yeah. And it gives them a Elias Neshama. Yeah, give the Neshama to those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other bit, this is, that's, that's, that's how you do Teva. That's the biggest Teva you can do. If a person, and that is the biggest Muhammad of the Sahara with every person. Don't believe in yourself. Don't believe in the value of what you're doing. Ah, Tyra means you steig 18 hours a day. Minimum. You know, we're going to decrease, you know, we're going to get a bonus. Only 18 hours. Not 20, not 22. 18 is fine. And you have to know Shas at least about that. At least. Whether it's Shadim, Nachranim, whatever it is. All this you need to know. All this you need to have. Otherwise, listen, you're going to make it anyhow. Oh, come on, be realistic. That's the main milcham of the time. You know, in the, the 12th century, the 11th century, uh, there was a very, very great Jew you know, the Rabbi Moshe de Recanti from the, the town of, of Recant, uh, or Recanti in Greece. In Greece. Yeah. And he, he is famous, he, his sefer is called the Recanti. The sefer of Recanti, Recanti, that's his, that's his, uh, it's 1100s. You know, before the Rambams, before Rashi. Okay. Rabbi Moshe, the Rikanti. Rikanti. Yeah, yeah. And, and he is, his chidushim, I mean, his, his, uh, his um, uh, input is in both Nigla and Nistar. In Shulchan Aruch, in Kisva Rizal, everything. Hakima de Yudaya, unbelievably great person. Do you know that the Rikanti was an Amaretz? Practically an Amaretz. Amaretz. An ignoramus. Yeah, almost an Amaretz. It wasn't Mamesh an Amaretz, but it was just a... Yeah, tough cop. It's written in his Agdama, in the preface of the Sefer Rikanti, his famous Sefer. And you know how <laughs> how long it lasted? That period of ignorance? Sixty years. Some say that actually the, the old the letters, because it used to be, you know, you know, these these wooden letters or lead letters that used to be in the olden prints, 
it was broken. It's actually 80 years. Before he started actually learning, being matzliach and learning, took either 60 or even 80 years. Thank you. <laughs> and he writes, Every single day he would come to his medras and would stick his head into Aaron Kaddish and beg a Kaddish Baruch Hu to open his heart in learning Torah. Every single day for 60 or 80 years. Okay? You take people in the show, they're saying this, this elderly gentleman coming there, sticking his head into our Kurdish and weeping bitterly. He wants to learn Torah. You know, what would we tell him? Come on, Mr. Rekanti, please sit down. Maybe I can make you a cup of tea with a little biscuit. You know, it's not good for you to get so excited. You know, it's not so bad. You have great things. Refuse to take no as an answer. Well, just now we had the story, you know, of a Rosh Hashim in Yishalayim, right? Gave birth to a baby boy, was it age 87, right? Yes. Age 87, he's, he's firstborn. Firstborn. His only son, you know, when the kid Bezat Hashem will be Bar Mitzvah, his father will be 100 years old, can I know how? Because he never gave up. The Yetzirah, the, 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 the putting the finger in the back of the neck, you know, that takes the, the, the kryptonite, that takes away the, the koyach, it eh, ain't going to happen. Yeah, but I just wasn't created for this. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, right, right. I think they, they took it from that. From this guy. That self perception. Oh, come on. Come on. No, please. You know, have a cup of tea with a biscuit. Come on, man. Don't be ridiculous. He said at the age of whatever, 60 or 80, what it was, he he put his head into the into the Arkadish. And he fell asleep. In his dream, they gave him to drink a little blazel of Be'er Shod Miriam, like Arizal gave to Reb Chaim Vital. And he started from that moment on, and he became the Rekanti. So Hanorah is filled with Rekanti. He said, Arizal is filled with Rekanti. I don't even know how many years he actually, you know, he, he's, he's, once he gets out of the Shema, he can, he can do it all. But in order for this to happen, he had to cry for 60 or 80 years, every single day against all odds, in lost odds. It's a lost cause. Come on, man. <laughs> you know, uh, what's wrong with you? Come on, you know. Yeah, take him home. You know, maybe lie down and rest a little bit. Over the hill. Yeah, over the hill. <laughs> Down the gorge <laughs> over the hill. <laughs> this is the thing. This is a richas yaman. When you are getting into the right proper chizuk and and isairus that befits your own particular kali, your own particular capacity, boom, you flourish, you run. You have to inject a richas yamin into the malchus. That kind of, of proper injection of the right balance. Tzadach is a you know, richas ruach, you know, but into the yamin. According to each person, according to what he is. They know many, even if he's a star, he's a star. Yuchad is not a Kosh isn't hidden from me. 
Because what happens is, and this is the the, the Nikuda that is very easily lost, Abayna says that there is a stara, and there is a stara shebetoch a stara, right? and explains what it is, because Shabbat is hidden from you, and then the fact that even the fact that Shabbat is hidden, that itself is hidden from you, a stara shebetoch a stara. Then Rabbeinu says, and even the story of the Chastara, Kodesh Baruch Hu is there. The letters of the Torah are there. And he says, and by injecting the Das, when the Tzadik, or whatever it is, the Baal Malchus is injecting Rechus Yomim there, it, it awakens the letters of the Torah there. And the letters of the Torah, you know, giving the person, you know, the realization of like, what am I doing? Right, what am I not doing? Usually, the way in the sense of that story, story is a cover, right? Underneath the Kodesh Baruch is hidden from there. A story is a story, meaning you have a cover, underneath there's another cover, and then underneath there's a Kodesh Baruch of the Torah, whatever it is. Rabbi is also saying something much deeper than that. In the very, in the very mechanism, of Astara. It's probably not under the Astara. Inside the mechanism of how things are into Torah, the people that are literally, you know, like the 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 uh the the, uh, the deepest and in, in the most deepest of all Hold on just one second. Of all the stars, can also wake up. Because it, then you can ask, wait, I understand. But I haven't seen enough of a star, you know? I, 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 I don't even know what Kodesh has hidden from me. I'm in the dark. But what happens if the dark the darkness that I'm in, it itself becomes light. Then you start seeing. The, the hiding itself, the mechanism, the hiding in itself becomes a Torah, becomes, becomes revealed. It doesn't matter whether you know Kodesh Baruch, you don't know in itself, the story that prevents from Kodesh Baruch, that itself becomes Torah, that itself comes and calls you, yo, According to where you are. One of the biggest uh, obstacles to success in Avoid Hashem is the fact that we want to see results. Hard cold cash. I want to see results in the here and now. When the truth is that if you realize that that slacha is perseverance, in the way it's Hashem, perseverance is that slacha. We just finished this the, 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 the week of Netzach. And we're into the week of Hoidnitz, Bezat Hashem. At Hashem, what's a Shabbos going to be like the Omer, Bezat Hashem. When the Koyach of Tzadik becomes, you know, reveals the Astor, Shabbat Ocha Astor. Lag Ba'omer. Lamed Gimel is also the same letters as Gal. Gal means two things. Gal means a monument. And Gal means reveal. Gal Enai, open up my eyes, reveal my eyes. Ve'abita, and I shall observe Miflores Mitarasecha, wonders. Of your turn. 
until Lag Vayemer, the, the world is in darkness. In Lag Vayemer, it becomes Gal. The Tzadik reveals. Arich HaSiyomi means the Tzadik reveals to you where you are, the greatness of everything that you do. From then on until the end of the sphere, there's 17 days after, after, you know, like Barman, 17 days means toiv. You might have toiv. Until then, is evil, you know, the, 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 the death of the 24,000 Talmudim of Rabbi Akiva. After Lag Barman, Shem Barachai is the Gilui. And it says, as Lavan said to Yaakov Avinu, Ki Eda Galaze, this monument, this gal is, is a witness. Because is between you and me, as Lavan told him. Gal Einai, when the eyes are open, Nifloes Mitoresecha, the ones of the Torah is actually made out of the words, Nifloes is the word Nafal Ois. That everything, all the phenomena in the world is actually a fallen letter of your turn. And Shimon Ba Yochai is the Tikkun of Oisa Ish. Because Oisa Ish has basically damaged the most precious concept in Yiddishkeit. Emunah Sadiqa. Took a mamzer and a hoodlum, ganav, plus a few more pejoratives. Say, yo, he's the dude. If you don't do things his way, Forget about it, you toast. What happened is, and he wasn't the only one because there were a few more such bandit throughout the generations, Shabtai Tzvi and, and Frankie Machshiman, and all, all those that what they did is the, they prayed on this hope. The Amishra said, okay, now get it out of the ghost. Mashiach has come, now we're getting out. And then obviously you get, when you take a person, you give him a lot of hope. And then you drop him. Then you disappoint him. You betray him. He crashes down with very, very severe consequences. What happens is that the biggest damage that this religion of this man has done is not the millions of Jews that they have massacred throughout the millennia. But the fact that they damaged the, the union of the tzaddik. Suddenly, you know, this is, you know the, the, like the literature world that says, leave me alone with tzaddik, Allah's mechop. We had enough trouble with that, just sit, learn Torah, you know, then Kaviyochel, the that's it. They have a tremendous resistance to the to the truth of the concept of the tzaddik. Because look what happened. What kind of damage that did. The mice the masses of people access to What the Sitracha did is what this this man did, he took a bite of the apple of the eye of Am Yisrael, leaving bite marks and residue of spit where it bit. The ticket for that is the Shem Bayochai. It was right at that era, right around that time. Am Yisrael is, the entire Am Yisrael, not just the the entire Am Yisrael is like flocking to Rabbi Shimon. Throughout the generations. Why? A very small number of the people actually learn Zoyer, used to learn Zoyer. Or... No, to Rip Shimon. 
to Rabbi Shimon, people used to go, hundreds of thousands of people would go to Meiron. You go to Meiron to the Tzadik, the Tzion of the Tzadik, most of them, Bechlach, <laughs> what do you want here? You understand Zoya when you open it up? I don't know. Why are you in Rabbi Shimon? <laughs> the answer is Rabbi Shimon is the Tzadik. On Lagba Omer, Am Yisrael is celebrating the concept of the Tzadik Emes. That he's a Tikkun for everything. Then rely on Shimon Bayochai on the end of the Tzadik Emes. Especially, Baruch Hashem, we already had Rabbi Nakodesh, he's already here, which gives Rav Shimon Bayechai, you know, the, the, an extra koyach Rav Shimon Bayechai has never had before. As Rabbeinu said, Rav Shimon Bayechai, Rav Shimon, is the acronym of Ir Vekadish Min Shmaya Nochis. You know, a burning angel comes from above. Is 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 Rosh Hashanah Shimon? And Rabbeinu says that that now there is a Nachal Novea Mekor Chokma. There's a, 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 a brook that is 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 flowing a source of wisdom that even the ear of a Kaddish Yishmael Nochis has to receive from. It sounds like you know you know, you know my team is much better than your team. But that's not at all what it is. It's the Shlemus. Shem Bayochai is Ir the Kaddish Bayanochis. This is Isarusa del Eila. That's a light coming from above. An angel comes from above. But Shem is coming from above. We had it in, 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 in Seder Pesach, all the lights come in the Seder. Then you have to start working from below. It's a sphere. Shem Bayochai is a tikkun of Ir the Kaddish Bayanochis. The Itarusa the, 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 del Eilo, the awakening from above, but that's not enough. You need an awakening from below. This is Nachal Novia Mekor Chochma, comes from below. Together, together, they form the completion of the persona of the Tzadik. Zat Hashem, both will be personified in the two Mashiach, 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 to Yeshua Shlemo, to Geula Shlemo, the Vias Meshech Tikkan Vedat Hashem, soon, soon, soon in our days, Amen. Okay.